can start now. So, there is a small topic on uh, torsion that I will cover and then I will stop as far as torsion is concerned. Torsion, this is a supposing you have a you have a shaft. and then it is applied a distributed torque along the length of this uh, distributed torque is there not not fixed torque you know which was there so distributed torque means let us say it is called it is mz per unit length torsion distributed distributed how will you formulate this so now the situation is like this if i take a small length of dz this is not total length dz only there will be as you are moving along the length there will be and this cross section and this cross section will have different torques. So, this this cross section will have a T and this will have T plus delta T. T is not uniform throughout this is only difference it I know. So, how will you formulate this problem? How will you formulation for this? I must have this is not given in standard text, but I also I mean not that I have invented this problem I must have seen in some book or somewhere. So, I have got some notes here. Uh, how will you formulate this? you are applying yes a torque. So, now you you have this uh, see you have this formula that T equal to G j theta I told you equivalent I mean G j theta and theta can also be written as G j multiplied by theta, theta is per unit length. So, if angle of twist is because here the angle of uh, if angle of twist is alpha, so it is d alpha by d z per unit length now. So, this will be alpha is the angle of twist and theta is angle of twist per unit length. So, theta is replaced by this. So, I have got one formula you know if it is varying T yes and then here if this length is dz. So, equilibrium is maintained if you see here equilibrium delta T net net torque is equal to delta T T plus delta T. So, delta T plus m z into delta z this is per unit length. So, this plus the difference huh, will give me 0 and therefore, as dz tends to 0 yes dz tends to 0 I can write this as and dt by dz 
equal to m z minus is a minus sign hmm. d t by d z equal to this. This is my second equation. Hmm. So, these are the two operating equations. These are the two equations. Now, I can get one equation out of these two. Uh, one can get one one equation out of the above two. How will you get d upon d z d t na t is given by ha. So, I can substitute in this t. So, d upon d z and the value of t is g j into d alpha by d z equal to minus m z. m z is the distributed torque applied along the length of the shaft. If so, this is your governing equation. So, it this is the governing equation even if g j is uh, varying it can be like this and if if g j is constant uh, then you can write down g j d square alpha by d z square second derivative equal to minus m z. Hmm. What I want to tell you is that second order equation in alpha we have got. Alpha is the angle of twist. So, this is the governing equation in alpha. You see similar equation we also get if you have distributed distributed load along the length of a rod, there also you get A e d square u by d x square equal to distributed load p huh? second order. So, it has a similar form. Uh, instead of alpha it becomes u. So, many problems in mechanics have similar form. If you go to heat conduction, heat conduction problem also has a similar form. Conduction of conduction of heat in a in a conducting body, I mean if you have if you heat a body, how does temperature, how does heat flow inside? That is also governed by a uh, simple second order differential equation. So, the basic idea what I want to tell you that if you know how to solve one type of equation, you can solve the other problem also. Okay. Now, there is an alternative formulation, this is a single governing equation, single, it is a governing is the governing is the governing equation. In single variable, single variable alpha. Now, this can second order equation can also be written. I told you, see, if you if you standardize your method of solution, standardize means yes, you know how to solve a system of first order equation which is also called state variable. Which I also explain, I mean I have been explaining that you can write down, write down your equation in first order form. 
So, this um, an alternative form of torsion equation. as first order equation as see second order equation cannot be directly integrated by numerical integration. Numerical integration method that you have uh, learnt in numerical analysis like runge ketta method, Eilers method is only for first order ordinary differential equation not for second order. So, you have to if you want to use one of those techniques to integrate your equation you have to transform this into first order. So, as a two equation one and two can be written in uh, uh, provided if you have uh, d z by c we already have one. I think initially also I gave you two form, but does not matter. Huh? So, we already have this uh, uh, t equal to for example, t equal to g into j into d alpha by d z. So, this itself can be taken as it is. I can write one d alpha by d z equal to t by g j as one equation and second equation I can write um, which came directly from my the d t by d z d t by d z equal to minus m z. So, this one now, instead of one variable alpha, now we are having two variables alpha and t and I can write down this into a simultaneous equation in matrix form alpha and t So, the form of this equation is again in the standard form which we have been discussing. This can be called y, a y vector of two variables equal to this matrix is my A or B matrix, it is a B matrix which I call it. This is y plus this is my load. So, it is a coupled first order ordinary. So, this is a coupled first order. So, uh, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have explained the same thing for uh, three dimensional as well as for two dimensional problems. So, it is a, a set of that is the above is a set of set of two first order coupled. Why it is called coupled? not uh, uncoupled because t and alpha are related to each other 
there is some uh, something is uh, they cannot be coupled ODEs ordinary differential equations. By the way, Y is also called a state variable. state along the path these are my variables which I have to find out. So, this is a state variable. So, this is what I just wanted to tell you that this formulation also now can be. So, so torsion of null circular section is a is an application of three dimensional theory of velocity. It so turns out that the problem turns out to be a two dimensional one. Uh, instead of three dimension it turns out to be a two dimension, uh, but it is exact solution. So, if you can solve this you will get exact solution of uh, torsion. So, this is one part. Now, see so far, see so far we have been formulating all our problems in terms of rectangular Cartesian system of coordinates x y z. That means, the geometry of my problem also has to be in the same rectangular everything rectangular, but in nature everything is not rectangular. Uh, some are elliptic, some are uh, uh, parabolic, some are uh, circular, cylinder there are so many geometries that you get in nature. How will you solve such problems? Solid does not mean only rectangular coordinate x y z that you can define your geometry in x y z. Hmm? So, some some coordinate system that you are aware with that like cylindrical coordinate system r theta z you have r you have theta and then z huh? you can get a cylinder. So, that gives you cylindrical surfaces cylindrical solids. Huh? and we can derive all your equations in cylindrical coordinate. Then you also have sometimes you know spherical a ball a spherical football. So, there also you have r theta and phi instead of r theta z I think you must have done al also r theta phi a spherical coordinate system. So, you can get a spherical uh, spherical uh, bodies solids, but I have not elliptical coordinate system have you heard about hmm? parabolic coordinate system, no. but then you, you do get surfaces solids out made out of this parabola. Huh? So, one has to deal with all such geometries. So, best thing would be to write down your theory of velocity equations in what is called orthogonal curvilinear coordinates, where there are three coordinate system alpha, alpha 1, alpha 2 and then there is a third one also at every point they are all orthogonal to each other. Now, they need not be orthogonal there, there are some people some scientists have also derived equations of elasticity equations in non orthogonal coordinate system. It becomes very complex because once you say 90 degrees then some simplification has to arise you know. So, so there are some special geometry that you can create out of non orthogonal coordinate system. One simple example is you must have do you know skew plates? Plates, this is a plate. If it is supported and then loads are applied transverse, so it is a plate. 
So normally you have your uh, culverts, bridges, they are generally right angle. River is flowing and you have this shore, this shore, so you support it. Hmm? But sometimes the road is, this is the river and road is inclined to this. So you have to have a inclined, so your, uh, uh, your plate will not be, not be having 90 degrees, but it will be, two angles will be more than 90, two angles will be less than 90. So that geometry is called skew plate. Skew. So, that is a very common skew plate is very common occurrence in practice, especially when it comes to culverts and bridges. Uh, skew angle. So, if a skew angle is 90 degrees, then it is rectangular. If it is 0, of course, you cannot have 0, uh, but as you go smaller and smaller, complications go on increasing. So, one way is to derive equations for each one of these separately. There is a book only on skew coordinates, skew plates. One person he decided to write only skew, where angle is not 90 degree. One British uh, designer, you know, his name is Morley, M O R L E Y, Morley. So, uh, there is a skew plate, the title of the book is, is there in our library, skew plates. So, if you want to study skew plates, then you will have to refer to the equations derived by Morley. And theory of velocity for cylindrical coordinate system, for a square curve coordinate system, you see one can derive from basic by taking the element, just like we have taken a small element in rectangular coordinate in Cartesian x, y, z, you take one small element in uh, cylindrical coordinate system r theta z and consider that and then you can derive. Similarly, in spherical coordinate, again you can derive. So, this is one alternative, but the best alternative is to derive the equations in uh, orthogonal coordinate system, uh, curvilinear, curvilinear orthogonal coordinate system. So, actually in the past I used to give once in a while uh, one assignment for people to this class to derive theory of velocity equations in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. There are, see there are some scientists who have worked very hard not that they have become obscure, these things are useful. Sometimes when you have to, you have, you have got a geometry which is not, does not fit into rectangle, then you will have to, so there is a book uh, written about 50, 60 years ago, it is by Morse and Feshbach, Mathematical Methods, M-O-R-S-E, Morse and Feshbach, F-E-S-H-B-A-C-K. Back. It is there, volume 1 and volume 2. There are two volumes. Uh, mathematical methods in physics. Uh, see, physics and engineering more or less similar problems we encounter in general physics. So, mathematical methods in physics. So, that book discusses a lot about curvilinear coordinates. So, when you have now, I have not given this year any, any assignment uh, to you to derive. So, if you get time, please read. Uh, in fact, when I was a student, my, my teacher, he asked each one of us to derive in a particular. Uh, there are so many type, you know, if you take that book, there are so many names like elliptical coordinate system, parabolic coordinate system, some other coordinate. So, he had asked us, each one of us to derive the equations in one of those coordinate system, one one. But if you know the general one, it is the best. And if you know the general, then the theory of 
split uh, sorry theory of cells uh, becomes easy you have to know this theory of cells is dependent on uh, curvilinear coordinate system so when you study next course that is theory of cells and plates there it becomes life becomes easier so that is as far as your i mean i am telling this is only on your self study i am not asking you to do it but then i have got here some derivations which i have done which i would like to share with you in two dimensional 2d 2d what becomes what is the most popular non non cartesian system of coordinate polar coordinate system there is only one polar r theta r theta so there is a book again and if you want i have got a you know if you want it i i have got uh, what you call e copy of this book so by m amin m amin computational elasticity now he has derived i mean this is the title is two dimensional problems in elasticity but then afterwards here two dimensional problems in polar coordinates so r theta so your element becomes your basic element you know instead of x and y dx dy it becomes this that is r d theta and dr size become dr huh? and then this is how you will have to consider and uh, you will have to derive all these these equations in this is the simplest what i am saying this is the simplest you take just polar coordinate two dimensions so at least you will get a uh, feeling of how it is derived huh? so all these are derived because you have to at least some simple problems of circular circular geometry thick circular plate supposing i want to solve it how will i solve it not by whatever we have done we will have to do it again so please see the equations derived in polar coordinate this is a part of your course this is one polar coordinates and then so quickly let me then because first i wanted to start with three dimensional that is cylindrical coordinate system this is plane cylinder this one is plane elasticity problem in cylindrical coordinate because this is a special case of three dimensional so i have uh, that one is complete about 20 30 pages was there yes <laughs> it was there <laughs> so elasticity equation is cylindrical coordinate okay so this is another important so you have r theta i mean this is x y z you have r and then if this is the point so theta is this direction and z will be perpendicular to this in z direction and uh, this is the kind of element that we are talking of that will be there in r theta z direction mm. so you will have to kindly i mean this this you will have to make some special effort so i'll quickly go through it then i have taken here a projection z equal to constant see here uh, these normal see this what is important here is this is this is r direction r direction is inclined so normal to this 
will not be in a particular direction I know. So, this normal you know it is here and this normal is here, they are not in one line. Yes, in our direction they all the all the stresses will be in the same line, but not in theta direction. Theta direction for example, if this is sigma theta, this will be sigma theta plus the increment of theta, sigma theta increment is this, but direction is not in the same direction, it is not in the same line of action. So, it is, so if you if you take this is angle is theta for example, from here to here is theta. So, this will be theta by 2 on this side and theta by 2 on this side. So, if you do not take although this angle is small because we are we are taking a small element, but then uh, while taking the equilibrium you will have to take cosine and sine. One which will be in r direction, one will be in tangent direction then only you can take. So, while doing this. So, this one you please take precaution. So, this is then what I have done here is just for simplicity, I have said you see there is also a convention of calling x, y, z as x1, x2, x3, and r is this. So, and these are my unit direct, unit vectors along x direction is e1. E2 and E3, which which we now also call it as I J K. You can call it E1, E2. So here, if it is in R direction, so R and theta and Z direction. So I am calling it E R, E theta, E Z direction. In the E Z, this E Z and this E Z will be same because Z direction will coincide, but not R and so, all the explanations are given here. For example, what is this? Relation between Cartesian and cylindrical coordinates can easily be written. You know, you can draw the figure x equal to r cosine theta, this is in polar, and y equal to r sin theta, z equal to z, r equal to under root this, theta equal to this, z equal to this. Huh? So, this is another. Now, here I have taken B R, B theta, B Z as the body forces and then I have tried to find out the, you know, by taking the equilibrium of the element in R theta Z direction. See, in R direction, because R has a dimension, R is a coordinate which has got dimension, but theta does not have a dimension, theta is a dimension left. So, a length in this direction will be r into theta distance so that will be the length so that is important you know so you have to when, when you have to multiply and convert the stress into force then you have to keep that in mind it will not be simply like df dy so anyway you can go through all this and uh, i will just quickly this is not there in Quiz, so don't worry. But it is there in your final exam. Derivation, yes. Huh? Isn't this derivations are not there? So anyway, all these derivations I have done in a long hand. So completely, uh, I have I have taken the element. I have done, I have shown everything, then the above theta is, uh, if it is assumed is small, tending to 0 such that cosine d theta will become equal to 1, sin d theta will become theta, cosine d theta by 2 again will become 1, sin d theta by 2, you know, because all such things come into the expressions. So, you will have to keep this in mind. Then here, Hmm. By doing all this, finally, one equation of this kind is obtained. If you sum all the forces in R direction, R means radial direction, then you will get one equation of this type. 
which is equivalent to del sigma x by del x plus del tau y x by del y plus del tau z y. z x by del z plus plus b x equal to 0. So, here it is like this hmm? d sigma r by dr this by this these two terms are similar you have to be careful about this term this and then this is another so please and similarly i have written similarly we get it is easily said than done you know similarly we always write similarly but then you have to Supposing I ask you to derive this equation, then you will find. So, these three equations, the above are the three equations of equilibrium in cylindrical coordinates. So, this becomes cylindrical coordinates. Equilibrium equations in cylindrical coordinates. Uh, these are the derivations of strain displacement. I have, I have not gone through the derivation. I have just written down here. Here I have also written all the compatibility. Don't write it. All the compatibility equations. And see, constitutive relation. There is no material difference. Uh, R theta Z is be similar instead of x y z huh? so there is no question of dr will not come d theta will not come nothing so, so this is just exactly so here there is no problem. but the other two Then of course, boundary condition, boundary condition either on displacement or on the stresses. So, this completes the formulation of boundary value problem in cylindrical coordinates. Now, plane space, I have also uh, put at one place all the equations of plane space and plane strain in polar coordinates. Polar coordinates means in two dimensions, r and theta only. Everything is in x, y, I mean sorry, r theta in plane. These are also are given here. The stress function slightly takes a change. In this, uh, any stress function, the final equation will be same. But uh, this one, your uh, uh, del square in polar coordinate. This is del square in two dimensional polar coordinate. So, polar coordinate you might have done also in mathematics. So, this one you can keep. And the stresses from, you know, these are the expressions for stresses.
generalize Hooke's law, there is no problem, that will be simple. Displacement equations means equation in terms of displacement. All elasticity equations in terms of displacement, how will they look like? So, for plane space and for plane strain, I have written here. And then, here I have taken some simple solution for plane stress problem. So, this is equilibrium, this is strain displacement. And this is compatibility, there is single compatibility relation, constitutive relation. These are the stress values which satisfy the equilibrium. That means I am trying to get solution by stress function. That means choose a stress function which satisfies the equilibrium equation. So here it is slightly complex. The form is not as simple. You know, there it was only second derivative of uh, second derivative of phi with respect to y and second derivative of phi with respect to x is plus minus. Here it becomes slightly complicated. This satisfies the equilibrium. Uh, what I have done here, yes, because we are using solution, so we are writing compatibility equation in terms of the stress function, so we get this one equation which is here, see it has to be practiced, it cannot be, so you have to go through this and finally this turns out that we are finally will get only a L square phi, so final form is same. By harmonic equation, there also we got, here also we get. Only thing is, in between complication is more. Now, now I have taken a thick cylinder. Thick cylinder. axisymmetric problem, internal and external pressure, these are the boundary condition, I see axisymmetric problem, so everything with respect to d upon d theta will become 0, problem becomes ordinary differential equation only in R, everything will change only with respect to only R, so it is a one dimensional problem, axisymmetric, so you get this fourth order ordinary differential equation with variable coefficient not constant coefficient, but variable coefficient you get here. We do not know how to solve differential equation with variable coefficient. Even ODE, ODE analytical solution with variable coefficient. Numerically I can solve, but not analytically. Analytically it has to have constant coefficient. So, So, 
what we have done od with variable coefficient have to be converted into od with constant coefficient change of change of coordinate so let us say psi is equal to log r i think lot of the things we have studied in our uh, school how to solve a particular differential the same thing is done here and so once you change this then then somehow it comes out to be constant coefficient so finally with this conversion if, if you say psi equal to log r then it becomes constant coefficient Ah, yes. So this becomes third derivative, third derivative into this in psi. So these are I have given you, you know, how to get all these derivatives with respect to r. How do you convert that into psi? So these are converted. Then you have substituted into that. If you substitute, we get a. This is my final differential equation in psi. Which is a homogeneous OD with constant coefficient. So this one is a is solvable. This we can solve. Homogeneous equation, of course. This. Uh, but how do you get unique solution of this homogeneous equation? We are solving this circular uh, cylinder with internal pressure and external pressure. This becomes homogeneous. How will you get solution? Homogeneous. I mean, a similar problem is in algebraic equation. Do, do you have homo x equal to zero? Homogeneous algebraic equation. Can it be? Uh, can will it give unique solution? No. Here also, oh, it will not give unique solution unless you have boundary condition non-homogeneous. Here we are having boundary conditions which are non-homogeneous. Internal boundary P equal to internal pressure, external boundary P equal to external. So these are called non-homogeneous boundary conditions. So homogeneous equation with non-homogeneous boundary condition, you will get unique solution. So that is so then we get unique solution. So this is what is the final solution. And since this has got these four constants can be obtained by the boundary condition that we have got under this. Hmm? Okay, so final. So it is like this. So it is a, it is tedious. What I am saying, it is not easy. But then this you cannot do by just by remembering. Unless, unless you have the book with you to complete, then only you can do it. So, so here you need open notes or open book. Anyway, this this gives you the solution. Finally, you substitute the boundary conditions and you get this constant. So this gives you one way of dealing with. But the best thing is to derive velocity equation in in orthogonal coordinates. You can note down there is a book. I mean, actually, you people should search where it is given. In your modes and feedback, I have given you. So whenever you have time. You Huh? And there is also a book on cell by Novozila. N O N O V O Z H I L O V. Novozila. Hmm. Sorry, sorry, not Novozila. Golden Wise. Novozila is also G O L D E N Wise. V E I Z E R. Golden Wise. Uh, theory of cells. And what he derived. The whole book contains equations written for non-orthogonal coordinates. Non-orthogonal. 
something very complex. How that he must have he spent his at least uh, several several years in the case. But anyway, he has. So, if you want to, because with these non-orthogonal, you can get very special geometrical forms. That is only way. And for those, you can analyze. So, these have some application. So, in olden days, all these works had lot of value. But after numerical and finite element methods etc. have come, people have lost. Uh, uh, they don't want to do hard work. You know, and any any solid, you fill it with elements. Any solid of any shape and size can always be filled with different kinds of elements, or even same kind of elements. This little approximation. And you can get some approximate solution. But if you want to get exact solution, then you have to take this help of these equations. So this has application. Huh? So okay. So this much I want to say. And today let us close it.